block with the buff chest out the wilderness with the rugged neck. How's it going YouTube Crazy 316 once again? Now, why exactly did I choose that name, Crazy 316? Well, to tell you the truth, it has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. See, what I really did was combine my favorite rapper from the group known as Bone Thugs and Harmony, which is Crazy Bone. In the middle of it, I'm a bring niggas more drama than they baby mamas. Nigga wanna battle when I bomb ya. One man but attack like a pack of piranhas, like terracotta. We be always ready for the war, but they don't really wanna see a nigga though. We get in them in the middle, then we hit them in the fittest with the venom of a nigga with a sick old flow. Doing the Swiss, oh no, the niggas is in trouble. Somebody better call Popo. It's gonna be murder when I get to serving them verbally. And I dropped the Y out of it as to not jock so much. So I ended up with K R A Z I E. And then I took Stone Cold Steve Austin's 316 title. Because I liked him back when I used to watch the WWF, or now WWE, and I kind of just combined the names together into Crazy 316. So, the new porcupine on the block with the puffed chest. Why the title and where did it come from? Well, it actually is pretty cheesy. It came from a game, Sonic Adventure. Now, you know, the character Knuckles, who was my favorite character, uh, at the end of the song, he has a phrase, the new porcupine in the block with the puff chest. And I kind of rolled with that and just threw it in there. I thought I'd explain that to my subscribers, seeing as how I have so many new ones that just showed up. And I thank you all for subscribing to my channel. Uh, must be doing something that you like. So I'm almost at 900. Thank you guys so much for uh, rolling with me for this long. So I thought I'd take the time out to, you know, do a video explaining and, you know, telling you about myself. Anyhow, before Crazy316 on YouTube, um, I pretty much just did drum corps or drum line in Ayala High School. And I did it also at RCC where... We became 2005 gold medalists, WGI world class gold medalists in independent world class. Uh, and I got my gold medal and pretty much I was like, it's time to grow up. At the time I didn't really have a job, a real job. And you know, it was hard to pay for the tour and everything. So I just, I got my, when I got my gold medal, I just, you know, left, left it at that and decided to grow up and go get a real job um, while finishing college. I used to be into that whole secular thing, you know, didn't really much care about doing things the way Christ wanted me to do it, uh, didn't really care about following his teachings while attending church and playing drums at the same time, but I later grew out of that. Anyhow, doing the whole thing with RCC was cool. RCC opened the door for a lot of opportunities for me. Got to play in American Pie 4, got to do an episode of Boston Public, got to be in the System of Down BYOB's music video. And I also played an episode of Monk, if you guys know what that TV show is, the USA uh, original. Right now, my field of study is CIS programming. That's the field that I'm going to be going into. Uh, I already build computers, so hardware is already a, you know, a side thing. Web design is already a side thing. I've been doing websites for quite a while. Back to music, I am the head musician of Power and Praise Christian Ministries on the keyboard right now. I was on the drums, but the keyboards that we had uh, left, so I kind of switched over and learned everything I could, and I'm still learning, but uh, I'm now the keyboardist, and as you know, um, the guy formerly known as Full for a Lifetime, he is now the drummer, so. Anyhow, as you may notice, if you dig deep in my library, you'll see that I started off on YouTube posting drum videos of uh, RCC and Ayala, uh, some of which are like 30,000 views and you know stuff like that but after that I believe I started you know in 2008 there was this big push for this same-sex marriage and homosexuality and homosexuals pushing their agenda in the government and in schools in a false premise under equal, uh, fair rights and equal rights which is a big lie and I won't address that in this video anyhow uh, I was already arguing with people before Fool started making videos, but after Fool started making videos, it pushed me to start putting out my videos, you know, which started off with who are the real haters, which goes into showing how evil the homosexuals were acting 
because they didn't get their way with the extra, extra special rights that they were trying to push for when it came to Prop 8. And from there, we always have people trying to, you know, throw the Bible in there and trying to throw arguments against the Bible. From there, I learned more and more and more about Scripture in my study, and I was able to, you know, start refuting claims and accusations against the Bible when it came to my biblical refutation videos. So, pretty much, I started with drums, ended up getting on the topic of homosexuality, and at the same time, getting on the topic of refuting atheistic or homosexual fallacies against the Bible, and all these so-called contradictions which don't exist, as we know if you look at my video library, or Christian Truth Hammer, you'll see that there's a lot of misconceptions and construing, misconstruing of the Bible's scriptures. It could be something so simple as, for example, when it comes to the baths. One scripture could say, hmm, this bath holds, which is the capacity that it can hold, 300 something baths. And this one scripture, another scripture can say it contained, which means that's how much is in there now. But they'll take it as a contradiction in saying there's two different numbers, but they were, you know, didn't read that one said contains, or contained, and the other one said holds is the capacity versus how much is in there. But anyway, that's just a little example of uh, a whole lot of fallacies that other people have brought up that plenty of us, and I don't go around trying to toot my own horn, but plenty of us have refuted. But on the way, I have realized and met atheists that have, you know, actually have genuine questions and are logical people that, you know, they want evidence for everything. And they can believe what they want to believe, you know, I don't harp on them for it. I have, you know, Freethinker, I have, you know, a few others that I'm actually on my friends list and we actually talk to each other and I've actually allowed video responses from Freethinker. And then there are other atheists who are atheists simply because they want to have a label to make it so they can be evil, rude, vile, and disgusting towards other people. And I believe they're just using that title just for those things. You have people such as Ima Juno. You know, you have your atheists that are genuine, and then you have your idiots, which YouTube, sadly to say, is mainly full of idiots. But there are some out there who are, you know, uh, kind, who, you know, just have a disagreement with you. But you have your idiots as well. Anyway, to pretty much sum me up, I'm strongly against once saved, always saved. Oh boy, I may get in trouble for that one. Pretty much just don't take offense at it. I just personally do not agree with that doctrine. To me, it's slippery doctrine. I am pre-tribulation rapture, and I also believe in the second chance during and after for those who are going to be martyred for uh, being on the faith. Pretty much I like responsible people and I'm a responsible person myself. I like responsible men and women that take care of business. I don't like irresponsible, lazy, and selfish people such as the deadbeat child of borders who don't want to take care of responsibility for their actions, which is 97% of the case when it comes to abortions. Their actions. I am a Republican conservative that stands for the First and Second Amendments. I also believe that if women are going to have equal rights, then they truly and really need to be equal. They don't need to be babied and catered to by the court system. Uh, marriage now is kind of like a joke because it's only a license for the state to transfer wealth from a man to a woman, pretty much. There's no true, you know, the, the true definition of marriage is slowly fading away into some kind of business as opposed to as a ministry and continuing a bloodline and the backbone of our society. You have a lot of females getting into marriages simply for the money. I've heard old chicken heads on YouTube talking about you make sure you get that ring so you can get your money if stuff don't go right. That's out of line and it's the very reason I think that these females are ending up in these rivers and curbsides and all this crap because I think that men are tired and sick and tired of being screwed over. Now I don't approve of these actions but I do think that is the case. Men are tired of being screwed over by the courts and these females. So, so anyway once again I'm Crazy316 that is just a little bit about me, you know. I don't want to
take up too much of your time. I just thought I'd make this for all my new subscribers. Thank you again and enjoy your day. This is Crazy316. I'm out.